Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. I've been inactive for a bit due to many reasons. New job, new home with a new desk setup, but hey, you're not here to hear all that. You're here for this, the Zhu Zhen EDC Haptic Slider. I need to first declare that my command of Chinese isn't that great, so I don't know the quote-unquote official name of this slider. On the back of the box, it literally says Chan Ping Ming Chen EDC Wan Zhu, which translates to product name EDC Toy. However, CK told me that he believes this is called the Tenor. Thanks, CK. And because of that, I'll be calling this the Tenor for the rest of this video, so please pardon me if it's incorrect, yeah? To kick things off, here is the unboxing experience. It comes in a solid plastic airtight case, and upon opening it up, you'll find the Tenor in a small felt pouch, a small bag of O-rings to be used as spacers, a T6 Torx driver with some spare Torx screws, a QC card, a business card, and a sticker. The tenner comes vacuum sealed with the serial number indicated on the sleeve, which also states the material of the slider. Find the notch and rip the sleeve to get the tenner out. What I have is the titanium version that features a stonewash finish. Looking at it closer, you'll see that the machining and worksmanship is pretty darn good. There are a lot of facets to the futuristic and angular design, yet each edge is nicely rounded. Of course, that's something you'd expect with a stonewash finish, but if you look close enough, you'll see that even areas that are generally harder to reach via stonewashing are nicely finished too, so no sharp edges anywhere. Another special shout out to CK for helping me obtain one of these. I have no idea how to shop on Chinese websites. The sliding interface is made of what I believe to be SLS 3D printed nylon. There are 8 visible magnet slots on each side, as well as the Zhu Zhen EDC logo, and this is also where you'll access the Torx screws for customization purposes. But before we talk about customization, I want to get to the highlight of the tenor, and that is the sound that it makes. The tenor features a sort of tuning fork that will ping and resonate with each click. So here's my first reaction to the sound. Take note that the audio here is raw from my mobile phone. Nice. Ooh. Wow. I like that sound. Wow, it rings. I love it. Wow, the second one. Wait. How did I do that? There, that's on. Next, I decided to pull in a few other clicking type of fidget toys to give you an audible comparison against the tenor. The ringing sound is really something else, and I absolutely love it. And now we can check out the internals of the tenor and the possible customization options. Undo the two Torx screws and gently lift off the top cover. Be very careful though, the magnets are very strong and tend to snap together, so make sure you're paying attention or you might lose a small part somewhere. The outer four magnets on each side are larger than the middle four, and those also have a little nylon spacer to keep them centered within their slot. This here is the default setting of my tenor. However, one of the magnets was inserted with the wrong polarity, and it seems that this was also the case with CK's piece as well, so it'll be worth your while to check. The internals of the tenor also show the high level of machining and workmanship. There is a very narrow window at the side edges of the raised middle section, and while it's quite tough to get on camera, peeking into the window, you'll be able to see the mechanism that creates the ringing sound. It's a lot easier to see in person though. 
One half has a sort of double-sided flat tuning fork, and the other half has a bar that features this zigzag pattern that gives it a sort of flexibility or spring-like property. I don't know the proper name for this, so if anyone watching does, please leave a comment and educate me. Thank you very much. The half of the zigzag bar seems to create that ringing sound, and to my ears, I don't think the half of the tuning fork does anything special. Maybe some sort of magic happens when the two pieces work together, but I'm not smart enough to know anything about that. In terms of customization, there are quite a lot of possibilities. You could reposition any of the magnets in any configuration, and you could do this on both sides as well to change the overall sliding experience. The larger magnets have a stronger attraction, so you could make it so that certain spots would snap stronger. You could also add the O-rings under the larger magnets to create a weaker pull. However, I found that the O-rings really only work well with the larger magnets because in the case of the smaller magnets, having the O-rings make the pull so weak that it's almost as good as not having a magnet at all, or in some rare cases, the O-ring slips around the magnet itself. Of course, if you have extra larger sized magnets, you could potentially swap them in as well for an even more pronounced tactility. Anyway, at this point, I need to say that tinkering around with the tenor was quite a frustrating experience with the magnets and spaces flying everywhere, but by some stroke of genius, I found a pretty good method that greatly reduces the possibility of flying magnets, and that's done by using one half to hold the magnets in place while replacing or reconfiguring the magnets on the half that you're working on. Just make sure you have the orientation of your magnets correct, and you can do that by first stacking all your magnets together so you won't forget the polarity, and then just inserting them one by one. Only insert the nylon spaces for the smaller magnets once you're done with the placement because the nylon spaces tend to fall out. Once you're done, place the cover back on and split the two halves while holding the cover in place and install the torque screws back. Now, for a quick size comparison. First up, we have the KAP Aztec Square Slider. Next is the Unquiet Hands Rocker Plus Clicker. Following that is the Ace EDC Haptic Coin. And finally, the usual suspects of a Victorinox Classic SD and an average sized lighter, joined by a Chris Reeves Knives Small Ink Cozy. So all in all, I have to say that in terms of fidget toys, I'm still a spinner guy and not so much of a slider or clicker guy, but I gotta say that the sound of the tenor is just too satisfying to ignore. It does sound a little like when you snap a Zippo lighter open and close, and in all honesty, this would probably be pretty damn obnoxious, but the sound is just so satisfying to me, so yeah, please exercise consideration when you're fidgeting with the tenor. The final configuration I've landed on is the original configuration where the larger magnets are in the outermost slots. And this is because I found that it provides for a stronger snap and louder ring whenever the tenor is returned to the original position. Again, for me, it's really all about the sound. Oh yes, of course, price point. I purchased this for 126 Singapore dollars, which is roughly 100 US dollars. Would I recommend it? Well, if you're in it for the sound, then yeah. Otherwise, in my opinion, as more of a spinner guy, this is kind of like most other haptic sliders. It just sounds different. And that is it, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing in this slice of my life. If you enjoyed this video, please clicky the likey. If you're new to the channel or if you're not subbed, please consider subscribing, it would mean a lot to me. I'm getting close to 8,000 subs and I hope to be able to hit that target soon. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway, so maybe this would be a good milestone? Anyway, once again everyone, this is the Tenor by Juchen EDC. It looks pretty cool, it's loud, it's most definitely quite obnoxious, but I just love the sound it makes. Thanks for watching and I will catch all of you in my next slice. Bye.